Hi everybody, this is Rob Windsor, and in this SharePoint developer walkthrough, I'll show you how to build a custom WCF service that's hosted inside of SharePoint. This demo is part of my SharePoint 2013 Client Object Model and REST API course on Pluralsight. It's part of the last module where I talk about working with custom and legacy web services. So without further ado, let's move on to the demo. We're back in our farm solution project. We need to be in a farm solution to create a custom WCF service that's going to be hosted within SharePoint because we need to deploy files to the SharePoint system folders, and that's not allowed in a sandbox solution. So one of the things that neither the client object model nor the REST API provides is an equivalent to the SP site data query. Now you can use search to get equivalent results, but when you're querying all of the lists of a specific type within the site collection, it's really, really easy to use an SP site data query. So we'll create a custom WCF service that provides the SP site data query functionality. Specifically, we want to find all of the task items in the site collection that are due within a specific number of days. There are a couple of steps required to implement our service. We'll start out looking at the C Sharp code. So I'll right click on my project and choose to add a new folder. I'll call the folder services. And then I'll right click on that folder and choose to add a class. I'm going to call the class tasks service. And click add. Now there's quite a bit of code to add in our service. So I'm just going to add it and then walk through it. So the first thing that's important to look at is what's called the service contract. So this defines the operations that are going to be available on our service. Notice it's an interface, and I've called it iTaskSService. Same name as the class, just prefaced by the capital I. So this indicates that we're going to have one operation, and we access this operation or call the operation by sending a get message to the service URL slash get upcoming tasks slash the number of days forward want to look. So if we send a get request to slash get upcoming tasks five, we want to find the tasks that are coming due in the next five days. So the interface defines the contract. And then down here, we actually have our task service class that implements the interface where we have the service implementation. Now, before we get to the implementation, let's clean up some of these squigglies. I can do that by adding a couple of assembly references and some using statements. I'll right click on references and choose add reference. Make sure framework is selected. And then come down to system.service model. So system.service model is the main WCF assembly. We'll add a reference to that. And we also need system.service model.web. This adds in the web programming features to WCF. Basically, that means the REST capabilities. So I'll click OK. And then I'll click on Service Contract and then use Control Dot to add the using statement for System.Service Model. I'll click on Web Invoke and then click Control Dot to add in the using statement for System.Service Model.Web. And then I'll click on the ASP.NET Compatibility Requirements Attribute, Control Dot, and add the using statement for System.Service Model.Activation. And then finally, we'll add the using statement for Microsoft.SharePoint. So again, control dot, and then add in that using statement. Now let's take a look at the implementation of our service. So I have a class called task service, and it implements the iTask service interface. That's our service contract. And because I've said it implements this interface, I need to implement the get upcoming tasks method. That's right here. And in this method, as I mentioned before, I'm going to use the SP site data query object to find all of the task list items that are due within the date range. Now, when I do this query, I want to do it in the context of a current user within SharePoint. I want to make sure that there aren't any list items returned that the current user doesn't have access to. So to ensure that I can run this in the context of the current user, I need to run my service in ASP.NET compatibility mode. And the way I do that is by setting 
the ASP.NET compatibility requirements attribute on the class to either allowed or required. Now, once I've run my query, I'm going to get back a data table. Well, obviously, since this is a JSON or a REST-based service, I don't want to return a data table. So what I'm going to do is extract out the information from the data table, specifically the title and due date for each of the task items, and then I'm going to put that into this class called the task info. We'll see this in just a second. But before we take a look at task info, let's just resolve these using statements. So I need one for system.data, and I need one for Microsoft.SharePoint.Utilities. All right, so let's scroll up here a little bit and take a look at task info. So here's our task info class. Very simple. Just has two properties, one called title, one called due date, a constructor to populate those properties. Now notice that the class is attributed with the data contract attribute and that each of the properties are attributed with data member. I need these attributes to ensure that when I return the generic list of task info objects, I create it here, and actually I'm going to return an array, so I'm going to convert the list into an array, but I'm returning the array here, that the title and due date properties properly get serialized into JSON. Now to resolve these squigglies, I need to add an assembly reference. So I'm going to right click and add a reference, again within framework, to system.runtime.serialization. Right there, click OK. And then now come back to my data contract attribute, control dot, and then add a using statement for that namespace. So that completes the implementation of the C Sharp code for our service. We have our data contract, the task info class. We have our service contract, that's the ITAST service interface. And we have the class that actually implements the service, that's our task service class. The second part of creating the WCF service is to create the file that actually represents the service endpoint. So we'll come back to our project, and I'll close up references here. I'm going to right-click and choose to add a mapped folder. And I want a folder that maps to the ISAPI folder. That's the folder we use for services in SharePoint. So I'll click OK. And then underneath the ISAPI folder, I'm going to create a folder with the same name as our project. So I'll just copy the project name, and then right-click and choose to add a new folder. And then I'm just going to rename that. And then in here, I'm going to right click and say, add a new item. And I'm just going to go to general and add a text file. Uh, so text file. But we're going to name this guy taskservice.svc. The SVC part is the important part. So go ahead and click add. And then inside of here, I'm going to put the information that WCF needs to call our service implementation. So we have a service host directive, and then we have the language attribute saying it's C-sharp. And then the service attribute takes the fully qualified name of the class that implements the service, plus the fully qualified name of the assembly. So our class is JavaScript farm, well, it should be demos, not demo, uh, dot services dot task service. And then the fully qualified name of our assembly is JavaScript farm demos version one, culture neut neutral, and then our public key token. Now this public key token will be wrong because it's in a project I created earlier. Um, so we need to get the fully qualified name. Really, we just need to get the public key token for this assembly. So to do that, I'm going to use a tip from Sahil Malik, one of my co-authors here uh, at Pluralsight, and add a tools item into Visual Studio that will get me the fully qualified name of the assembly I'm currently working on. So if you just search for WinSmarts and then find public key token easily, you should get to this blog post. So I'll come back to Visual Studio and I'll go to Tools and then Strong Name. 
that gets me the fully qualified name of the assembly. I'll just copy that to the clipboard and then come over here and replace what I have with that value. All right, so that is the service attribute. The other one is this factory attribute. So it's Microsoft.SharePoint.Client.Services.MultipleBaseAddressWebServiceHostFactory. And then that's implemented in the Microsoft.SharePoint.Client.ServerRuntime assembly. So normally when you add a WCF service, you need to add configuration information into a config file. And generally that's going to be the web config. Well, adding configuration information into SharePoint is sometimes problematic, particularly when you're going to try to update the web config file. But luckily, this multiple base address web service host factory that's provided to us by SharePoint doesn't require any additional configuration. So all we need to do is just properly set up the service host directive, and it takes care of everything else. Okay, so at this point, we're ready to test our service. So let's right click on our project and choose deploy. And then come over to our browser and go to the base URL or, or go to the URL for our site and then add in um, slash underscore VTI underscore bin. That's the virtual directory for the ISAPI folder slash JavaScript farm demo slash task service dot SVC. That's the URL to our WCF service. And then we want to call the get upcoming tasks operation. And all we need to add here is the number of days, and I'll put five for now. Now, before I hit enter, I'm going to go over and start up Fiddler. And then come back to the browser, go to the URL bar, hit enter. And then close this little message down from IE. Come over to the browser, click on our service request. So you can see, whoops, so let me just go to raw. Right, so you can see that there's the request, the upcoming tasks, five. And then come down here, and we can see we have four results coming back with both the title and due date for each item. Now, where are these tasks coming from? I probably should have mentioned that before I actually ran the service, but if we come back to our demo site, I've added in two task lists with different tasks that are due at different times. Here's task list one. And there is task list two. So these query results are coming from querying those two different lists using the SP site data query.